All right. What is the best way to implement a hash table? Any search algorithm that uses hashing consists of two parts. The first is the hash function, and the second is collision resolution. Two common methods for collision resolution are separate chaining and open addressing, but which one of these two algorithms is actually better? Instead of giving a theoretical argument for each, I decided to do some benchmarking in order to find out which one of them actually performs better. But first, I'm going to give a quick overview of hash tables. If you already feel comfortable with this material, feel free to skip to this timestamp. Let's say we had some object, like for example, the string key that we want to store in the table. But we don't want to have to search through the entire table every single time in order to retrieve it. Because, guys, let's be honest, that's pretty cringe. Like seriously, imagine if you store things in your room like that. Oh nice, I got some gum. Oh boy, I really want some gum. Guess I need to do a linear search of my room. Nope. 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 Instead, we can come up with some function that takes the properties of the object we want to store in our table and uses them to generate a number. Then we can find the remainder of the division with the table size with the hash value we generated in order to generate an index for our object. The reason we need the modulus step is so that the index that we generate is always less than the size of the table. This is actually called hashing by division. Apparently, there's also hashing by multiplication, but who, who does that? Well, apparently Donald Knuth does that. Who the heck is Donald Knuth? Uh, computer scientist, uh, professor at Stanford, uh, no Nobel Prize of Computer Science, father of the analysis of algorithms. Just gonna quickly change this to hashing by multiplication. There we nice. go. Once we have our index, we can use it to store our object. And if we ever want to retrieve it, we can use that same function we created earlier to directly index into the table. Clearly that's very convenient, but what do we do if we have two objects that end up getting mapped to the same exact index? This is called a collision. And for this, we need a collision resolution strategy. Let's say we filled up our table already a little bit, but then we get a new string, let's say key four, whose hash index collides with a key that's already in the table, let's say key one. One way to solve this problem is through open addressing. With this technique, we simply probe over the table, looking for the next open slot. There are many ways to probe. For example, we could probe linearly, quadratically, or according to some other scheme, like let's say the Fibonacci numbers. The other option we could have gone with is called separate chaining. With this technique, we can connect colliding nodes into some chained data structure, like for example, a linked list or some binary search tree. Just so you know, you'll often hear the term buckets, and that just means groups of nodes that all had the same hash index. Now with either option, as we gain too many collisions, our hash table will experience performance degradation. That is why we need to keep track of the ratio of the number of elements in our hash table to the number of buckets i.e. the size of the table. If this fraction ever eclipses our critical capacity metric, which we call the load factor, then we need to allocate more space, usually double the size of the table, and rehash all of our elements. A good load factor is usually around 0.5 to 0.75, depending on your collision resolution strategy. And that's literally it. That's all you need to know about hashing. Now let's quickly go over the testing methodology. I'm just going to show you a little bit of what's going on. If you want to see the full breakdown of the code, you can look in the description below. I'll have a link to the GitHub that has all of the source code for what I'm about to cover. Now for a super quick rundown, I implemented three different hash tables. The first one is with linked list chaining that uses a basic linked list nodes. And just to see if it made any difference, I also implemented a, a version of chaining with the like dynamic arrays, which for Java, that's like array list basically, instead of linked list nodes. I also implemented a hash table with open addressing, which uses smaller nodes that don't require a pointer and probes according to some probing function that I can set. Wait a second, is that recursion? in my code much better recursion is cringe guys the two probing methods i'm going to be testing are linear probing and fibonacci probing and also i'll be testing java's hash map because it uses a combination of linked lists and binary search trees so it should give us like an interesting baseline i expect it to perform pretty well but we'll see i'm going to be using java, the java micro benchmarking harness to test how each hash table handles having a huge text file inserted into it like word by word basically and that's it so if you want to see the actual source code feel free to go into the description click on the github link and you can view the source code there yourself but now let's actually run this thing and look, take a look at the results. The first thing I calculated was the throughput, which is just the number of operations per second, basically, of each of these algorithms. And I found that Java's hash map implementation actually performed the best, followed by the Fibonacci open addressing, uh, then linear open addressing, and of course, linked list chaining. And, and those three were all fairly close to each other. But by far the worst performer was the dynamic array. 
That makes sense since maintaining a dynamic array is very expensive. Next, I used the garbage collection profiler to test how much memory was being consumed by each of these algorithms on average. And I found something very strange. This chart shows the number of megabytes per second consumed by each algorithm. The dynamic array performed the worst by far, once again, unsurprisingly, and both open addressing algorithms performed better than linked list chaining. But Java's hash map was incredibly memory efficient, like strangely. In order to get a better understanding of exactly what's going on here, I checked how much time each algorithm was spending actually garbage collecting and I found something actually bizarre. Yes, that bar you can't see on the right there is Java's hash map. So clearly their hash map is highly optimized for their environment. Okay, fair enough. Just for reference, this is what the garbage collection chart looks like without Java's hash map skewing the results. This obviously gives us a little bit more of a fair comparison. Now all the tests I just showed you were run using a normal, like good hashing algorithm, but what happens if we use just an absolutely horrible hash function? So I edited the hash function of the string class to be just absolutely horrible and reran the tests and... What? Huh? Yes, you saw that right. Linkless chaining was by far the most performant. So what does this actually tell us? Like, what does this data mean? Well, if you're using Java and your hash function is working well and your data is relatively normally distributed, then your best performer or your best bet is definitely going with Java's hash map. It seems to be very well optimized for the JVM. So it'll probably be difficult for you to beat that uh, with your own implementation of a hash table. However, if you're just curious in general or you want to make your own hash table for whatever reason, then it looks like the best performer, again, with a working hash function and with normally distributed data is open addressing. And I wouldn't really read too much into the difference between the fact that Fibonacci probing seemed to perform a little better than linear probing. Um, if you want to like micro optimize like that, then you can run your own tests and, and maybe find even a better probing algorithm. But open addressing was both a little faster and took less memory. So it's kind of hard to justify going with chaining in that case. Uh, that being said, as we saw, if you have either a bad hash function or data that's not normally distributed, then it looks like chaining is by far and away the best solution for, or the best implementation of your hash table. So those are the results. Again, feel free to download the code, run it yourself, change it up. If you want to test your own hash hashing functions or your own hash table implementations, you can do that using the benchmarking that I created. Um, as always, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you would be so kind as to subscribe or like, or even maybe share this with somebody, like that's actually a really big one. That would go a really long way to helping this channel. I'm trying to get to 200 subs. I think I have like 186 now. So uh, hopefully we'll get there. Anyways, peace.